It's really great to be here at COGEX and to be sitting alongside our brilliant speaker today, Kate Royce um, from, well, I'm going to ask Kate to introduce herself and talk a little bit about your role really, Kate, because yeah. obviously I know you and I know you really well, but perhaps let's kick off there with, before we talk about what lies ahead for supercomputing in the UK, let's start with, tell everybody your role and Hartree's role and where you fit in the ecosystem. Yeah. So I'm the centre director for Hartree. Hartree is a special research institute, part of UKRI and part of one of the seven councils, which is the Science, Technology and Facilities Councils that runs the national labs and we're part of the national labs ecosystem. The Hartree Centre's vision and mission is to put technology into the heart of UK businesses, whether you're private or public sector, we're here to help you. And that can be with any of the emerging technology that we hear in the news today. So we've had a lot of press releases about AI. It's been very exciting recently. We also look at exascale compute and what that means for industry. And we also look at quantum computing and other emerging techs like neuromorphics chips and all that sort of stuff. So we're talking today about the future of supercomputing and what lies ahead. And I was really, really keen to have this conversation, particularly on this stage, because we're talking AI and deep tech. And we'll probably talk about this as well in terms of why, why we're having this conversation here, because computing power, computing infrastructure, access to compute infrastructure is already key, but it's going to be even more important for our AI future and deep, deep tech going forward. So we wanted to talk a little bit about where we are right now, um, the evolution of compute power, and then obviously looking to the future of what's the supercomputing, what's the direction of travel in the near and long term, as well as explore what that could mean for developments in AI, in, we were just talking about safety, in quantum, yeah. um, as well as in, in other deep tech areas. And then perhaps talk a little bit about, well, what do we need to do to get this right, right? What do we need to do to realize this opportunity um, I was really, really honoured to be part of the government's independent future of compute review recently, which a um, number of recommendations have been taken forward, and perhaps we can talk about that as well. But this is just emphasised in my mind how important compute and supercomputing is to us right now, but how it's going to be important going forward. So perhaps before we look forward, let's look at where we are right now. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Um, so, Kate, let's think about... Where do you think we are right now with compute in the UK, with supercomputing in the UK? And what do you think you know, is, is on the near and perhaps the long term horizon? It's a really exciting time. And just, just hearing you just try and summarise what's going on is, is hard at the <laughs> moment. So at the moment in compute, we are at a real sort of emergent period of time where a couple of new technologies are coming out and coming together. Um, one of those is what we've talked about, exascale compute. Yeah. So the exciting thing about that is the speed of processing, the fact that we'll start to be able to do huge large language processing. So this is natural language models that you've heard about in the press. Um, and the other really exciting thing is the emergence of quantum computing and the relationship, which is where people like me are getting really excited, between the classical compute and this new technology of quantum computing. And we're starting to see some really exciting convergences between those two technologies, particularly around the machine learning AI area, of what we can do with those two emerging tech. So this is, this is the time to be in this world and it is really taking off fast. Yeah, I agree. It's, it feels like we're really, we're really at the kind of step change yes. of what's possible, but what's going to be possible in, in, in the years to come. And I think the future of Compute Review was looking at, well, how do we get this right? So two of the key recommendations that came out of the review was one around um, ensuring we have access to compute power for AI research. We know how key that is to the UK, and not just the UK, but here looking. And we had the announcement yesterday of um, the new compute resource. Yeah. I don't know, do you Isenbar, want to... Isenbar AI is the, what the new resource will be. So the government's um, pledged, I believe, 150 million um, to help with a 
AI research in the UK. And the reason this is so important is because we need a different type of supercomputer. We need one that uses graphical processors rather than CPUs. So this is why we're really excited. I'm going because I'm thinking accelerated GPUs. So I'm starting to say accelerate. <laughs> um, it also means that we've got to change how we do our programming. So the next big thing is going to be software development and programming for scalable AI applications. At the moment, traditional way of doing most of our big compute is using CPUs. So um, the weather modeling particularly, community tend to use CPU-based compute. We're going to need to move that and transform that into GPU compute going forward. Yeah, so it's not just the hardware and the infrastructure, exactly. it's the software and the programming and the engineering that we need to, to make sure that we get this right as well, and yeah. the two need to work together. Yeah. It's a really great the supercomputing for AI research that was announced yesterday. It's going to be based in Bristol. Yes. Hence the name. Hence Isambar. Hence, hence the name. Um, so really, really great to see that recommendation moving forward. The other kind of key, well, there were a number of recommendations in the future mm -hmm. Compute Review. Go and check it out. Obviously not right now, but um, as your homework. Um, the other one was around making sure we have a path on the road to exascale. So you, you touched on it a little bit, but why do you think that's so important? So X-scale compute is incredibly important. One, we've talked about AI and particularly large language modeling. We also need it for digital twins. So providing and producing realistic digital twins of the natural environment particularly. And then there's the work within the astronomical and particle physics community where we are starting to produce so much data that the only way we're going to be yeah. able to process that in manageable timescales is going to be with exascale compute. Yeah, yeah cause we could really seriously unlock the secrets of the universe in a way that we've never been able to Literally. do before. Help with climate modeling, yeah. as well as there are industry applications and commercial applications of these technologies. And one well, of the right? biggest, I think, industries are, is, is a really good point, is when we talk about net zero and decarbonizing our economy, one of the biggest uses at the moment that we have put together for exascale compute is around the chemical and materials industry. They are desperate to find new chemicals, new materials that do not rely on carbon quite as much as we do today. Yeah. yeah. So a question I get asked quite a bit, and you, you touched on it a little bit with the, the, the mention of quantum, mm -hmm. which is a, a super exciting area as well. Um, kind of makes my brain slightly ache when I work on quantum, but in a good way, in a good way, folks. I would highly recommend it. A um, is, is question I get is around, well, if, if quantum is the future, then why do we need to be investing? Why do we need supercomputing? Why do we need exascale? Why? And the answer I always give is that these are going to be working together, right? We've got classical computing and quantum are going to have to sit together. But the, the supercomputing, the exascale compute and quantum together, when they work together, it's that convergence piece again. Mm -hmm. That's where it, the real power comes. Absolutely. And, and it's, I, I'm really excited because I was at a meeting yesterday when colleagues within Hartree Centre were talking to industry experts around the value of quantum and quantum classical approaches. Yeah. And we were showing just that, that there are certain things that quantum computing will be great at. Machine learning and optimization problems particularly, it will be excellent at. But at the moment where we are, we do need classical compute to check its homework, if you like. Um, and one of the things we had, I saw a really fabulous bit of work on was rev using a workflow for drug discovery um, for COVID. Because when we were in COVID, um, some of you may or may not know, um, we ran a lot of simulations in Hartree and a lot of the other supercompute centers to see what drugs were out there that would have properties that could perhaps provide um, medical support for the COVID. Um, and what we found is when we reran that with a quantum kernel for the machine learning part, it was much better at selecting chemicals that were medicines basically mm -hmm. that were use, useful that could be used so there is definitely we've got to scale it up we're still a long way from industry yeah. ready yeah. but we are showing time and time again that we are able to show benefits with quantum yeah 
I mean, we were doing this with um, looking at cancer screening as well. Um, quantum computers, again, are very, very good at that sort of image recognition analysis. Mm. Again, you wouldn't rely on it completely. But again, we have shown on small data sets that it can pick better than an AI algorithm run just through a classic yes. workflow. So there is, it's very, very exciting. Yeah. If I could get a quantum computer to swim around Manhattan for me, that would be good as well. So if you could work, work on that so that I can just yeah. sit at home, that'd be great. Um, really, it does feel like a, a super exciting time. And we, we were talking on the, on the main stage yesterday about how a lot of these technologies we've been talking about for some time, right? AI we've been talking about yeah. since the 1950s. Quantum has been, um, a lot of people always said to me, uh, even eight, nine years ago, well, it's a long, long way off. But it, it, it now seems to be, uh, and I'm sure a lot of the deep tech we're talking about here, mm -hmm. seems to be more of a reality because we're in a different place, because we've got the compute um, resource, because the infrastructure is here, the compute power is here. Compute power seems to be, the, the key to a lot of moving forward with these really exciting innovations in a way that we've never seen before. Yeah, absolutely, and also we've got the data. Yeah. And that's the other thing. We've got to have big data, and we've got to have the compute power to process it. Yeah. And at this moment in time, those two things have come together, together. And yeah. that's why we're seeing this rapid transformation, particularly in the AI field. Where AI is working really well, so chat, GPT, and all of that, is because it's feeding off huge amounts mm. of structured data on, on, on the World Wide Web. Yeah. Do you see this slowing down, the pace of this no. evolution slowing down anytime soon? I, I can't see it. Once we have exascale compute, of course, we then start producing exascale amounts of data. So then we've got to look at how do we process that, how do we store it, all of these things around this exascale um, transformation that we're just at the edge of yeah. um, is going to show us whole new insights in how we look at data, play with data, process data. Yeah. It's a truly exciting time to be it in It really this is. It really is. If you don't come away from Cogex feeling really excited about the next stage and next step, then, um, then where have you been for the last three days? <laughs> um, so. The theme of COGEX uh, is really, you know, how do we get the next 10 years right? Mm. I'm going to ask you that as our kind of end question. Mm. I think that's a really good one to, 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 to pose. But before we get there, just I can't not have you here and ask you your views on the, the announcement last week that we've, you know, finalised the association with Horizon Europe. Which I was just so pleased. It was such a brilliant way to start the day. I was like, oh my God, it's over yeah, the line. It's great. That. It's here because it's so important. We know why it's so important, but why do you think it's so important? For me personally, big science and what we're talking about now in big compute as well, I would include that as part of the big global science agenda. Yeah is a collaborative field, yeah. and we have to be part of it. And it's a global conversation, right? Exactly. It's global. We need to be part of Europe. Um, the UK really did very well out of the previous European mm. Horizon programmes. Horizon, was that Horizon 2020? Yeah. And we were seen as real trusted partners um, and valued partners in a lot of very big Proposal CERN is yeah. another one which we are a big partner in. Um, we do a lot of big science in the UK and we're globally leading. So we need to keep up there. Yeah. So really excited. And now we've got access to the European ecosystem on compute as well with their new supercompute and exascale compute that they're d developing at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're now wondering, well, what's this Horizon Europe? Or you're like, this is great, now I, how do I get involved? Because there is there's research money, there is funding, there is opportunities. I saw yesterday, I think Innovate UK are doing a webinar, forgive me, I'm, I can't remember the date, but it's either next week or the week after, where all your questions on um, Horizon Europe can be answered. Mm -hmm. Tech UK, we're going to look to do something similar as well, so we can spread the word, because it's great that we've now, the association has been confirmed and that we can move forward, but we need to get researchers, we need to get businesses, we need to get industry using yeah. it, right? And so working it's not together. just about researchers. There's a lot of research going on in industry, and it is very much open to you guys as well as to those that work in the academic yeah. fields yeah. too. 
Yeah, and the great thing about it is it's also consortiums can bid together, so it brings people together, and it's a great way of building relationships, building networks, building your contacts, building projects that you want to work with others on as well. Yeah. So absolutely. I think we've done our Horizon Europe plug tick. So let's, um, we've, we've only got a few minutes left. Mm -hmm. So let's focus a little bit on that final question of uh, how do we get the next 10 years right? I want to ask you, Kate Royce, what's on the top of your list or top of your, you know, what do we need to make sure we get this, get right for compute in the next 10 years? So for me, sitting where I do, um, the ecosystem of computing access needs to be right in the UK. So we've talked about Isambar yeah. AI. We want to make sure that we have an easy point of access for industry, for academics, to be using these national facilities. Which includes Hartree. Which includes Hartree. We, we've just launched our procurement for our next HPC as well, which will also be enabled for AI applications, actually. Very importantly, it's going to be a GPU accelerated machine. So we're going to have lots of these state of the art facilities, we need to have an ecosystem that makes it easy for you all to use. The other really big issue around AI uptake in compute is to understand and have that open conversation about the ethics mm. around use of data and the security around use of data. We, we know the data out there, particularly publicly accessible data, is very biased because it was collected for a particular purpose. Reusing it for a different purpose means we've got to be very, very careful. So we need to be supporting the skill base around that as well as having a lot of these big summits. We've got one coming up mm -hmm. soon that the UK government is leading the way in. But we also need to be training everybody around it. And finally, for me, as well as the skills, we need to be developing software to run on these new machines. We've mentioned that exascale machines do not work the same as a classical HPC does. The AI algorithms need to be rewritten in a different way so that you can use them. So that requires training and investment in developing that software so people can move forward. Yeah, absolutely. I think those are all brilliant points. So I would add to that from my perspective, thinking about it from an industry point mm. of view, is how we also ensure that industry are thinking what supercomputing, yeah. what exascale, what quantum could mean for them as well. So how do we ensure that, of course, it's all of this computer infrastructure is vital for research and researchers, and that could be industry as well as um, in the yeah. public domain. But how do we get business leaders to also think about, well, what does supercomputing mm. or what does compute infrastructure mean for me? Yeah. How could it unlock my business or how could it help me drive that innovation that I think is going to be transformative to my industry? And that's partly what... Tech UK and Hartree are here to do. Hartree's there to actually take you on that journey with that AI problem that you've got. What technology do I need to solve my, my digital problem? What's the best way? We've got government funding to help you do that. So get in touch yeah. through, through Sue at Tech <laughs> UK or come directly to Hartree and we'll help you on that journey. Because at the moment, I think for a lot of industry, it's very difficult to know what technology you need um, what's the best way to do it? And to develop a massively big, skilled AI data science team off the bat before you've even got anything running yeah. is very expensive. And that, again, is something that Hartree can help with. Yeah, that's a good point. We need to make this easier for people to understand yeah. what it means for them or what it could mean for them. Because yeah. it, it's a very complex, um, busy uh, conversation right now, right? It's a it's, and so it can, can sometimes feel overwhelming. So I think always think about value, always think about what it could mean, yeah. what it could unlock, what's the problem, yeah. what's the issue you're trying to solve. And if you're not sure, come and talk to Tech UK and Hartree about what, what your problems are, because we can, we've probably got, if we haven't got the experts ourselves, <laughs> we probably know the expert. We, we probably do. Well, Kate, absolutely amazing and great to have an opportunity to talk to you about the work of Hartree and what lies ahead. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for being with us today and thank you, everybody. We hope you found that useful. And thank you. And back to Stephanie. Thank you very much, everyone.
Yes.